what y'all writing down. I'm doing sound, I'm directing the band, I'm trying to do so many things right now. If there's anybody who would like to learn how to do sound, we can teach you on Thursday night. Y'all come. It's a lot of work. So, trying to get rid of that hump. Get that kick, man. Keep going. Sorry, y'all. Is that all right we get right? Okay. This is killing me. I think it's better. That's not worth Cool. How many of y'all know God to be a good shepherd? Thank God I'm not the shepherd. But it's good to know that we serve someone who has the capacity to love us. Yeah. Even, even when we seem unlovable. Yeah. Amen. I praise God for him having that love and being a good, good shepherd over us. Yeah. And I pray he'd be a good shepherd over the sound right now because it's still hurting me right now. I'm sorry, y'all.
we delve into your word and feed our hungry souls so we can make it a little bit farther on this road of life. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. He is a mighty good shepherd. Amen. 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 We want to uh, take a look this morning at the end of Acts chapter 8. Starting in verse 26. There's a word from the Lord for us this morning from there. Acts chapter 8, beginning verse 26. It reads as follows. And the angel of the Lord said to Philip, Get up and go toward the south, to the road that goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. This is a wilderness road. So he got up and went. Now there was an Ethiopian eunuch, a court official of the Candace, queen of the Ethiopians, in charge of her entire treasury. He had come to Jerusalem to worship and was returning home seated in his chariot. He was reading the prophet Isaiah. Then the spirit said to Philip, go over to this chariot and join it. So Philip ran up to it and heard him reading the prophet Isaiah. He asked, do you understand what you are reading? He replied, how can I unless someone guides me? And he invited Philip to get in and sit beside him. Now the passage of the scripture that he was reading was this, Like a sheep he was led to the slaughter, and like a lamb silent before its shearer, so he does not open his mouth. In his humiliation justice was denied him. Who can describe his generation? For his life was taken away from the earth. The eunuch said to Philip, About whom, may I ask you, does the prophet say this, about himself or someone else? And Philip began to speak, and starting with the, with the scripture, he proclaimed to him the good news about Jesus. As they were going along the road, they came to some water, and the eunuch said, Look, here is water. What is to prevent me from being baptized? He commanded the chariot to stop, and both of them, Philip and the eunuch, went down into the water, and Philip baptized him. When they came up out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord snatched Philip away. The eunuch saw him no more and went on his way rejoicing. But Philip found himself at Azotus, and as he was passing through the region, he proclaimed good news to all the towns until he came to Caesarea. You may be, may be seated in the Lord's presence. In this very rich passage from the Acts of the Apostles, after Jesus has risen from the dead after the Holy Spirit had come at Pentecost. There is a, a nugget of help for us uh, who may be hungering for a deeper walk with the Lord. The writer tells us that there was an Ethiopian eunuch. Amen. A eunuch is a person who has been castrated. Amen. Who, whose private parts have been removed. He was a eunuch, y'all. And even though we may not have that same problem, we can feel like we are castrated. Do I have a witness to you? Yeah. We, we can feel like nobody really recognizes us. We can, we can feel like, even if we have an important position, like this man did, that we don't really count. But I, I want to suggest to us, first, first of all, let me say this before I get into the further meat of the message. I want to suggest to us that uh, Philip had been driven into Samaria because of persecution in Jerusalem. Now, Philip follows the direct order of the Holy Spirit to go to where the eunuch was. He was driven under pressure to go north 
to, to share the good news. He, he was told by the Holy Spirit afterwards to go south to share the good news. Now, I wasn't that for us. Sometimes we can feel like because we've been let go of or put out here, there, or other, that we don't have anything good about that situation. But I want you to know that God was in control when Philip was driven out by persecution the same way he was when he told Philip where to go south. Amen. 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 I said the Lord was in control when you were thrown out just like he was when you were driven, when he, when he told you to go elsewhere. Amen. Amen. Oh, yes. Philip goes down. Listen, God knows your location. He knows every single person's location in here. He, he knows where you are. It, well, yes, he does. He knew this Ethiopian was reading the book of the prophet Isaiah. In fact, he kind of set it up. Amen. How can, how can it be possible that he'd be reading just the right passage for Philip to come up to the chariot if God didn't have control? You have to watch everything in the word of God. God was in control even of the passage that he was reading. Have you ever opened the word of God and fell right on the page that you needed to fall on? Amen. And, and, and it's interesting. Uh, he was Ethiopian, meaning he was uh, African, brown person, dark brown person. Amen. Ethiopia today, as it was then, is a black country. Amen. And, and just after the gospel had gone from Jerusalem to Judea to Samaria, where the ten northern tribes of Israel had been lost, the twelve tribes are almost covered. An Ethiopian is reading the Hebrew after having gone to Jerusalem to worship. When Solomon had a son by uh, the Queen of Sheba, Menelik, and sent and, and, and Sheba went back to Ethiopia, Solomon sent some company with them. Much of Ethiopia before it became Christian was Jewish. Amen. Amen. In fact, uh, the so-called philosophers, is kind of a derogatory term, the Jews from Ethiopia, a large number of them were flown by the Israeli government to Israel some 25, 30 years ago. Might have been longer than that. I think it was longer than that. Anyway, there was a large Jewish population in Ethiopia. And this man, being a Jew, was a part of the original Preaching of the gospel to the twelve tribes. Right. Amen. And, 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 and on his way back, Philip, under the guidance of the Holy Spirit, as we just read, approached the chariot. And the man he heard was reading out loud from the prophet Isaiah. And, 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 and the man, Philip said, do you know what you're reading? Amen. Now listen, by the way, he could have been reading anywhere in the Bible and it would have been talking about Jesus. From the fifth chapter of the Gospel of John, verse 39, it says that uh, you search the scriptures thinking that in them you have life, but they speak of me. Jesus said that. The, the purpose of this book is to speak of him. Oh yeah. Adam was the first type of Jesus. When Eve ate of the apple, Adam knew she was going to die. Adam loved Eve so much that he died with her, a type of Christ. You gotta get it. Cain was not, his sacrifice was not accepted. Abel offered a lamb, an innocent lamb, from his flock, signifying Jesus. Do I have a witness to it? Y'all don't believe me. The whole Bible talks about him. Noah was a type of Christ. He took his whole family and the animals into the ship of Zion to save them from the destruction of the planet. 
Jesus is coming back to do exactly that. Amen. Amen. The whole earth was baptized in that instance. Right. Yes. Oh yes, we're doing baptizing today. Right. It's interesting that this passage just happened to come up for, for, the, for the order I've been going in for this baptismal day. Amen. Amen. And then Philip, uh, after the man asked him, invited him into the chariot, he got in and he started to tell him who that was talking about. Amen. If Philip had not been familiar with the word of God, he would not have been able to be a witness in that situation. That's a suggestion to us that we need to know and study God's word, Amen. not just so we can show off Amen. and let everybody know how much Bible we know, Amen. but so we can be useful as witnesses in the kingdom of God. Yes, sir. Amen. All right. He said, um, he started to tell them who that passage was talking about. Had he gone on some more or gone a little before, it would have said he was wounded for our transgression. And bruised for our iniquities. Every single time the apostles preached, they quoted passages from the Old Testament that pointed to the Messiah. It's a necessary part of preaching to recognize that 600 years before Jesus came, somebody wrote about him. This is one of the passages that is mostly, most direct about who Jesus is. Have I got a witness? The, the Jewish people today say that that passage signifies the suffering of the Jewish people. I don't deny that. But I also say it signifies the suffering of their Messiah. Even if they don't recognize it. Oh yeah. And, and, and the passage goes on. It says that the, 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 the Philip shared with him and he received Christ and then he said there was some water and he said what's what? What's stopping me from being baptized? All right. He had already told him about baptism. Mm -hmm. So they stopped the chariot and got in the water. Mm -hmm. Philip and the, and the eunuch and Philip baptized him. Mm -hmm. All of that came from God setting something up. All right. yes. Oh yes it did. Some of us sometimes try to force witnessing. Mm -hmm. yeah. If God is in it you don't have to force it. Amen. It just works out. Yeah. Somebody brings up a conversation for you to witness. Yeah. The problem with the church is not that we are not wanting to be witnesses, but we are not walking in him in a way that he will use us all day, 24-7. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Right. When you're in him, things are going to come up for you to witness. And it's not the pastor's job to bring in the folk. My job is to train them to go do more witnessing. Right. Right. It's your job to be a witness. Mm -hmm. And if you're like me, you got something to witness about. Right. Amen. Right. He brought me through many things in my life. Yes. When I was down and in despair and in depression in college, Jesus set it up for me to come out of that depression and to meet him out in the field walking around the edge of a college campus. Jesus entered my life in a way that no one could have set up but him. Have we got a witness? He's been good to me. He watches over me day and night through thick and thin. The Lord is good to me. Do I have four or five in here? That Jesus has been good to. When you were when you were not even thinking about it, even yesterday, he kept you. When your mind was on the stuff of the world, Jesus still kept you. And eventually you're going to realize that he's the center of all of your joy. Well, yes, you will. Oh yes. Philip baptized the man. Well, yes, he did. As a symbol of dying in Christ on Calvary and rising again out of the water. As a symbol of dying to sin and coming up full of grace. As a symbol of dying in, in defeat, 
but coming up in utter victory. I don't care how down things get. You can be baptized all over again, symbolically speaking, or yes you can, in your life. When Friday comes, and it does come, Sunday's on the way. Do I have a witness? It may be Friday today, or yes it may be. I may feel like I'm being crucified in my life. Like Jesus said on the cross, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Yeah. Trouble is on every side. Yeah. Oh, but I want you to know that that Sunday morning is coming. Yeah. Oh, yes, it is. Yeah. Victory is on the way. Yeah. I don't care how bad things are. Yeah. I said victory is coming. Yeah. Oh, yes, he has overcome whatever's going on in our life. Well, yes, he has. Yes. Through sin, even through our shame, even through having ignored him, he's going to let us die and then raise us up. Mm -hmm. There are consequences to sin. Yes, but sin has a deeper role underneath. Mm -hmm. What happens to us is that because we are so prone to look for something to make us feel good because we don't feel the Holy Ghost, we get involved in something we got no business getting involved in. Right, right, right. Right. There's no substitute for the joy that only God can give. Right. I don't care what it is. It may feel good, but it's not God. Right. If it's good to you, it's not necessarily good for you. Right. Am I gonna so we need the power and presence of the Holy Spirit. Oh, yes, we do. He'll be there with you, even on Friday. Yes, He will. Even when I'm breathing, I feel His comfort. Even when I'm not all that I should be, I feel the presence of the Lord. Even when I'm not all that He wants me to be, I feel His comfort somehow. Jesus never gives up. Jesus never forsakes us even though we feel like it. Through the storm and through the rain. Through midnight and through sunshine. Jesus is always there. Hell got a witness. Oh yes he is. He went to the cross on a hill called Calvary. Yes he did. They nailed his hands to the rough wood of the cross. Well, yes, they did. He bowed his head, thinking about me and you. Only a Christ could think about every single one of us. He told me once that he thought about me on the cross. But I knew right away he thought about everybody else. He gave his life. Yes, he did. In, in ultimate De defeat. But then a Sunday morning, he got up. He came up out of the water on Sunday morning. Yes, he did. Jesus got up, y'all. One of these old days, by and by, he's coming back again for, for a wretch like you and me. Just silly enough with all my education to believe in the Word of God. Amen. All the books I've read do not even come close to this book right here. Amen. And none of them can match what He has done for me. The Lord is. My shepherd, I have everything that I need. He 
lets me rest in the meadow grass and he leads me beside the quiet stream he restores my failing health and he helps me to do what honors him the most that's why I'm saying, that's why I'm saying, that's why I'm saying, in his Be blessed this morning.